Okay, so um, after an opening prayer there uh, off camera, here we are. And so David um, Sharp is a friend of mine, an old friend, um, long time uh, friend and and uh, but many of you uh, you will have seen me share the ridiculousness of the buffalo coat dances um, you will have seen me share uh, pictures of he and his family you will have seen and stories of them with spontaneous praise and worship with his kids you may have seen a video of a blowing the shofar, um, but in, in ways great and small, um, mostly remotely, honestly, we've not spent a whole lot of time together in person, um, but in ways great and small, David um, encourages me, uh, it tests me and holds my feet to the fire uh, to remain uh, a man of integrity. Uh, husband and father of integrity. And so, David, welcome to the podcast first. And just kind of as an introduction, um, if you'll just share kind of uh, a little bit about you, a little bit about us, how we know one another, I think that'd be a great launching point uh, for for folks who may not know you. Um, Sure. Thanks, Ben, man. What a uh, quite an introduction. But um, yeah, um, quick version. I've known Ben since um, I, he, I was kind of early into uh, announcing rodeos, and he was getting into bullfighting in a bigger way down in South Georgia. But um, and then he he uh, started really pressing in up at uh, practice pen in Conyers, and then uh, and then he just he just exploded, went all over as a bullfighter and saddle bronc riding, and we became friends. And then Ben goes, "Man, I think I'm gonna go do." ministry stuff at church and, and I go do what <laughs> wow that's wild <laughs> and then so we uh we floated through life and mutual friends and rodeo events and different things and started talking about faith and um I remember him saying well I'm getting into leather work and I go well, I don't really have anything I go wait a minute I got some shafts I'm not putting a cross on them or something cool and um but um and then uh I think probably, um, whether, I don't think probably, I know for a fact that, um, and, and it's ingrained in my memory because, um, for anybody that has gone through just, just ridiculous, um, hardship, I mean, anybody that's ever read of, of, you know, tearing a sackcloth and gnashing of teeth or, I mean, I mean, I don't know. I probably came as close to somebody that like could have been pierced in the side and only water ran out. I was so empty and void of stress and not comparing myself to what Jesus went through. But from a human standpoint, um, I I literally fought a battle and walked in and found my wife um, deceased to a gunshot wound after just 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 a short period of time of struggle and challenges and i'm sure for her you know and i'll I'll never know but um yeah man it was just like but but to give you the kind of the crossroads where ben and myself and i can i can recite the words to this night not the entire prayer because for those of you that um know ben his prayers um can be deep and saturated with a lot of things that that somebody in 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 stress it just covers them but may not totally um set and reside at the on their tongue but but there was a few things that he said in that worst moment um at the funeral home and one of them i don't know why i captivated and i had to research it because i i wasn't sure you were right but i was he said like god i know you you know you cast out angels out of heaven a third of them but two the the other two thirds uh, um to every one of them to line up and surround this man and do not let him fall Though Amen. he may, though he may stumble, and I, woo, and I, I don't know what the, where the rugged cross was, but I knew where the two thirds of angels were, and I was glad to have them. Um, so yeah, so Ben, that was that was really, um, man, that was the big crossroads, and that took me, um, that took me from there, and that was a seed that planted that um, combined with the notes. Um, my my wife left an open Bible and scriptures. Obviously, one's one's always Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. You know, for all the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to you, not to harm you. Blah blah blah. But I'm just like, man, I'm reading these things and they're overwhelming. Um, mm-hmm. Going, yeah, well, I'm not I'm not sure, man. This this is not 
just don't feel very prosperous. And then the other one was the Isaiah scripture about the waters and not letting the waters pass over you. And, yep. and they're in her handwriting and I'm going, all right. Um, and we had just built a new house, just finished adoption, was about to get a, a baby. We had struggled with fertility, losing children. Uh, and, you know, I now look back on it and go, I can see a lot of the, the snowball um, and, and, you know, I don't know how far you want to go in this. I always tell people my story is much like the Bible. It's, it's, it's pretty PG-13 um, <laughs> because of um, some of the struggles that I went through, um, Ben, were not, man, they weren't just, they, they, and quite honestly, they weren't really flesh and blood at all. I mean, I mean, to the point, I don't know if I ever shared this with you, but a lot of people can relate, and I hope somebody can here, that I woke up at night, and and I went pretty quick right back to the same place in bed where I found her because, for me, I, I mean, I knew what a, a wonderful woman she was, and I knew, without a doubt, no matter what people would say to me, that she went to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, Ben, I'm, I'm, and I was like, there's a portal to heaven here, and I want to know more about what went on, but... Uh, and I'll let you, I'll leave you with this thought, and then I want you to give me some input. But she left me an open Bible. She left me some scriptures, and I thought, she read something in here that said, you know, give up, take your life. There had to be something in here, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crack the code. So I did it all. I mean, I went to her counselors, nothing. I mean, I went everywhere. But I went into that Bible, man, and I was like, I am going to figure this out. And I don't, I mean, it wasn't the first time through and I went consecutively. I think it was two and a half times through from cover to cover on my back porch down there in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I, yeah. my, I traveled, took it with me. Yeah. And at some point, <laughs> I just never did find the solution, but I did, yeah. I did find the, the absolute answer. And, and that was Jesus. There's no, I mean, I am a living, you hear people say, um, man, I have this faith with, because of, you know, my upbringing and I went to church, went to Awana, went to Sunday school and not knocking it, but sure. man, man, when you have, I mean, it's like, it's like you, man, you can't say, well, I watched a bunch of videos of bronc riding and bullfighting. No, you got in the middle and did it. And when you experienced and you come through and I don't, I don't mean, um, I don't mean go around. I mean, it was, it was to the point where they were trying to give me medication, anything. And I'm like, and I told my family, I said, look, if, I, if something happens, I take my life. It won't be, it won't be because I was, um, medicated and I'm not knocking people that sure. have to do things to sleep or get through the day. I believe there are, there are bridges and things with medicine that get you there. But ultimately, man, I had to go, if I go down, it's going to be, <laughs> It's going to be because God was holding on to me all the way, but I'm going to go down, you know, fighting. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the, the quick version of how um, we got to know each other. And then you called, phoned me and said, hey, I'm out of here. I'm going to, I'm going to Missouri. Yeah. I'm going to Missouri. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for everything. I'm kidding. Yeah. But yeah, no, so in, from my side of the tracks, you know, coming into rodeo, of course, we give him all kinds of grief. But Kevin, um, Alice, there'll be a few people maybe that listen to this that know us and know that circle. Right. But as just a ragtag kid, you know, you guys were the veterans and y'all were established. And, you know, and so coming through, you know, you and Adam Wood and Kevin and kind of y'all's group, your nucleus, as just a young kid that was hungry, you know, I, I, from afar was watching and emulating and listening and learning and trying to absorb that. Right. And, um, was, it, it was such a gift because later, uh, each of you, all three of you who I admired as a kid, young kid, I got to know, um, very, very well and actually became friends with, uh, which for me is not normal. And, um, so, um, and each kind of in a different role, you know, Adam, I, I actually broke the ice with him went at the circuit finals one year and he was calling me a name that wasn't mine. And I had enough of it and jumped up on the bucket shoots and kind of gave it back to him and he laughed and we were friends. And then Kevin, um, you know, traveling and, and fighting bulls and stuff. But with you, um, 
it really was losing Terry. And I mean, we were in spheres together, but never really together. Um, I heard all kinds of stories, but I didn't really know you. And um, the only reason I'm sharing this, if you're out there and you're listening and we're talking about authentic community um, and in general and more specifically uh, Christian community. And so I remember very clearly, um, I, I remember the days leading into the day um, that Terry died. I remember very clearly the day that Terry died. And I remember very clearly the, the days and weeks after Terry died. And um, what I'm trying to communicate is that, that in Christ, the relationships, our connections in Christ are um, that familial connection, our brotherhood in Christ. It trumps all of the worldly stuff, all of the worldly structure and status and who's who and what spheres they're in, all of that stuff bows at the name of Christ. And I hate the tragedy, and I don't even use the word hate. A lot of people that are listening to this um, are people that came through our student ministries or somehow were involved with our student ministries, parents, siblings, and they'll know that I don't use the word hate. (laughs) But I hate the circumstances. Right. Um, but it was through that fire uh, that our relationship, I feel like our relationship was forged. And Amen. it's one of those things. It is cliche, but it's one of those things. It's kind of like I am with Phil Broom. No matter where he is, I love him. Mm-hmm. And I can go a day, a week, or a year, or two years, whatever, three years, without seeing or talking to Phil. But, but our relationship is just different. Um, and we can pick right up and it's um, easy and natural and authentic. And so I do hate the circumstances, um, but I'm grateful for the for the connection um, with you. And yeah, so I, um, that night, the, so the flip side, the opposite side of that night at the funeral home, we had come in and done the visitation and everybody was in that big room member. And, and um, I'd done all the things I was supposed to do and I was leaving and I was headed out. I got to the double doors to go out to the parking lot. And very clearly the spirit of God said, I want you to go get him and I want you to take him into a side room in private. And I want you to put your hands on him and you, you, you pray to him like you pray to me in your in private. And I'd never done that with a person ever. And, uh, and I tried to brush it off and go on to the truck. And when I got to the truck, when I went to reach for the door knob handle, the, it, it was like a feeling of impending doom. That's the only way I can. It was like if I got in that truck and drove away, something would not be well. And so I turned around and went back in and, Walked in and I mean, I couldn't feel my legs. My hands are dry. My mouth is, I couldn't spit if I wanted to. And you were surrounded by people, you know, and and to go up and say, hey, can I pray over you? And immediately you broke away from everything that was going on. I was like, yes. And we walked out of that main room and down, you know, there was a little atrium or narthex and then there was a room. And I, I do not know who came in with us. I can't remember, but there were a couple. There were a few that came in with us. And um, that was what I would call a, a sacred moment of grace um, for you. I think I know, I know that I know that it was a sacred moment of grace for me. Because on the back side of that, like I, you and I talked on the phone every day um, for, for a while. And one day I called and I was like, DL, what's going on, man? What you up to? And you're like, I'm downtown Atlanta, walking up and down the streets, finding people who are experiencing homelessness, giving away socks. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, you're, I'm like, you're doing what? And you're like, yeah, I was reading my Bible today. And this is what I read. And this is what the Bible says. And so I just went and bought a truckload. And anybody that knows you would know it's truly a truckload of socks. 
and we're just 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 dri- just walking up and down the streets of Atlanta, uh, blessing people. And wow. from there, um, what I'm getting at is from my side of the tracks, uh, an act of obedience, and then stay in the course and and consistently um, making the relationship a priority. Here we are. How how many years has it been? So seven, uh, 10, uh, 15, Fif- almost yeah. 15 years. And I've never, we haven't talked about this. Um, when I see you dancing with your babies before bed, in my mind, it's like any time that the Holy Spirit gives you an unction to do something, Amen. you do it. Amen. It doesn't matter what Amen. it doesn't matter. Um, and I'm not saying that, that that has anything to do with me. I'm just saying the residual 15 years later, the blessing is still the lesson is yeah. still there when it's uncomfortable and inconvenient. When you're not sure if, if the Holy Spirit gives you an unction, you obey because you don't know how it's going to affect an environment, a person or yourself. Well, and quite honestly, you can be you can be rest assured. Two things. Um, <clears throat> number one, that I I think about those things like that because I go for you, um, as 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 prayer virgins, I go like I I, I look back and I go here I am. I mean, I'm thir- about to be thirty seven years old at the point, and nobody that I knew had ever had ever prayed. If they'd ever prayed with me or for me, I was totally unaware of. It. Sure. First time, and I and I'm like, and I've told you this, and people use this as cliche, but being even even the God size hole in me, I mean, it was literally a God size hole. I don't care if it was everybody I'd ever came in contact with since since I was in daycare mm-hmm. would have lined up to hug me. It would have been it would have not been void. Not that I don't love that. But the community piece, again, is is critical. But 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 the faith of your community and the people around you have to be. It, it has to be in that, like you. It has to be in what Jesus said: um, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Otherwise, your self will slow you down. And if it's not scary enough, or if it's not challenging enough, um. And that that probably gave you the, the 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 strength to start doing other things like that, and eventually be bold enough to move to Missouri for crying out loud. I mean, because once you realize um, that I'm literally in the wheelhouse of what God wanted me to do, because I was obedient in that thing, and I denied myself. I mean, because and we use the 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 First Corinthians thirteen verse at weddings about. Love is patient and kind and does not envy and does not boast and all the things that love is. But, I mean, if we have not love, and and obviously that's where you finally operated out of. You went, I don't really care. And I don't really, really know this dude, but I love him and I love where he's going. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm willing to take a risk. Mm-hmm. Um, I may look like an idiot in this funeral home with all these people. I don't know. Um and it's and it's wild, yeah. and it, and if until it's 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 even like now, I mean, when I hear people about forgiveness, and I man, this is so cliche, and I know you probably have preached more sermons on finances and forgiveness um, than you can count, but but man, this whole thing of I got to work through it for forgiveness, man, I, I just don't buy it, mm-hmm. man, and I I got to tell you. There was there was somebody um, that I had to forgive big time that took me. It was the hardest, hardest thing to do mm-hmm. because I had failed at the biggest job of my life and was not protecting Terry. Mm-hmm. And so I could not forgive me. Oh, wow. I mean, I could, I, mean, I could not forgive me. I couldn't. And, and obviously it was jacking up my relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Because I couldn't receive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I literally could not receive any. I mean, I mean, you know, part of the problem is people. 
and this has taken me a long time to learn too, Ben, is that you can believe, and this this may people may not love this people people can believe in Jesus and still not believe him. Yeah. Oh. Literally, literally not believe Kill it. I mean, when you read all the commands and all the things, yeah. and and it's an identity crisis. Oh, I mean, good. you know what it is. Yeah. We we just can't receive. And, and and we're are capable not and some of it is I mean we're just God bless fathers but man we're I mean we're a broken nation when it comes to father and father figures which is why it's important for for people like you in a youth ministry and Warner Robbins to make a huge difference in kids because you know mm-hmm. how many were were treating their heavenly father or receiving the very same way they receive from their earthly father. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, I, I literally go, come on, David. And I, I remember, but I also remember at 37, and I, and I want to say the man by the healing pools had been there for 37 years, but I remember me hearing that to my core going, and Jesus going, I don't know if you remember this. He goes, looks at him and goes, do you want to be healed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just want to sit there and and complain about it and go, man. Everybody beats me into the healing pools, and and then he said, "Well, take up your mat, man." I remember grabbing my mat and going, "I I, I just can't sit here because I was convinced I would be the guy that would die of a broken heart." I mean, and that was okay with me. I thought it would be noble to go, man. That guy died. He loved his wife so much, and he just sat over there. And um, I mean, Ben, I was, I think, it, I mean, within. I mean, I was 183 or four when Terry died, and within two weeks, I was 148. Yeah. If that tells you how much stress and anxiety were just, and I, I mean, the best thing I could get down was Pepto Bismol for two weeks. Um, so, I know that's a lot, but man, that's that's real. Yeah. And 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 it was not easy. I remember year one going, if I can just make it a year, Lord. I got this because you know how things are. We're all calendar, and and we, and and you know, just the way it is. I mean, I'm certainly, I'm certain that the boys in the furnace didn't go. Hey, man, if you'll just get us through uh, an hour, if you get us through an hour, we'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, when it's hot, when it's hot, it's hot. It don't matter how long you're in there. But we lo- we love to put a calendar on. Yeah. It. And I remember getting to a year and. And I thought, man, there, I would, and, and going through grief share. I remember going through grief share and I thought, man, I'll get a certificate and I'll be done with grief. This will be awesome. So let's talk about that a little bit because that's another kind of, if I, which who am I, but from an outsider's observation, if I like make a timeline and I'm charting you just as an observer, for somebody's journeying with you, um, that was a major. So not, not going, not only going through grief share as a participant, but then going back, there was one time I talked to you on the phone and you were leading multiple grief share groups in multiple places. So if we're talking about authentic community and we're talking about how do we how do we serve? How do we become wounded healers? Mm. How do we serve from these places that were meant to steal and kill and destroy? Amen. So let's talk about well, that just a little. Tell me about the grief share experience, and then what was that like? That's a wild one because, again, um, as men, same way that failed me with with Terry is I, I I was a fixer. I thought well, I'll just I'll just I'll just ask her what's wrong, yeah. and I'll fix it. I'll yeah. go if it's if it's this, I'll get rid of it. If it's that, we'll get rid of that. And then if it's you know the adopting the baby's too much, I, I don't know what yeah. I'll do, but. So I was convinced that if if I get my if you fill your permit in in grief you know get your car yeah. and then you can move on. Uh, for those they of you that don't know. understand yeah. radio, there's a there's a there's well there's an apprenticeship program to becoming Perfect. fully aware in the grief share program, yeah. but um, but that wasn't the case. And I and I tell you, I remember um, McDonough Christian Church. Paul Leslie was pastor there, and. And my wife just loved him, and I and I did too. But I but I went to church. This is crazy. I would go with her to appease her, but I, I always wanted to get there after praise and worship because I was like, man, they sing, and and I just want to get the message so I can try to apply it in my life. And and listen, hear me out, folks. I mean, self help 
um, I mean, leave that to Tony Robbins or Amen. somebody, but because I, I was, because you can't make it, you can't make it through the end of the football game on Sunday night before you've lost whatever you heard in, in church. I mean, it has to be out of the abundance of the heart, the overflow. But um, anyway, so I remember walking into that church dark and, and literally dark. I mean, like, you know, the old gym churches with no windows and they built them back in the day in the South yeah. first, you got a gym before yeah. you got a church. And uh, laying laying down where they had built the raised floor to, to for the pulpit and laying there and just man in tears going, um, because I believe this. I believe that I could screw up so bad in this grief share and say the wrong thing because I knew how volatile I was at one point that I would call somebody to walk out in their car and take their life. They were so deep in anguish, and I remember laying there going, God. And hear this, hear this, people, because I, I literally, this gave me more peace because um, everybody goes to God be the glory. But I, I mean, God told me he could handle it. And I said, God, to, to you be the glory, but also to you be the, the, the errors if I botch mm-hmm. this up. You're getting the credit either way for how Amen. this goes because I'm willing to, I'm willing to be yeah. the vessel and I'm going to be clear about that. And that's when I realized it had to be the Holy Spirit inside of me that was going to speak out of overflow of the heart from a place of love and community that was built in this thing of listening. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even have to say anything. I mean, these people, I mean, you know, you're, you're a pastor. I mean, who in the world wants you to come in and what verse are you going to give them? I mean, I can tell you right now, everybody wants to give you Romans eight twenty eight, but unless my wife was walking back through the door not all things were going to work together for good for my purpose yeah. at that point. I pro- sorry, sorry, but but when I got to 829, I went, oh, so I can be conformed into the likeness of his son? Maybe there's more mm-hmm. to this. Um, it's not all about me. So, um, But for me at that point, Ben, man, I, and, and to your to your question, you're, you're right. I mean, I started leading after that. Um, they asked me what I, um, what was the word? It wasn't least facilitate mm-hmm. another group. And so I did. And then I started doing them at other churches. What they didn't know is, I, and you remember this, I was running extreme bowls for the PRCA at the time. And I would literally fly home, go, go do a grief share class. Nobody would be any the wiser. And I'd go back to the airport, get on a plane and fly yeah. back just because I knew somebody was like me that was walking in there, crawling, not walking. They were sitting in their cars and sometimes I'd walk outside. And go look and just look at cars and go, man, look at that. I've sat in that car and went, I ain't going in. I am not going in. That's kooky. That's kooky as crap. It's it's the kooks that I love. And that's my hope in this podcast is because we have a whole community of kooks. There's there are yeah, there are people to. that are like I'm gonna go look in the cars to see and find the ones that are on the fence, you know. And that that is the realness. That's the realness, man. That's what separates. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to put anybody down that might hear this. But that's the imagine if everybody who called themselves Christian. I mean, you would never say this. I'm going to say it for you. David is wildly successful. David is wildly successful in multiple professions sometimes multiple professions at once and as a pioneer um not just in in production and how to film rodeo and bull ridings how to produce it how to get it out and packaged broke the mold and kind of cracked the code in streaming um that's just on the rodeo side that's not um on all of the other food service side and stuff, but uh, he would never say this, but he is a person of influence, highly regarded and respected, extremely successful. And you're talking about a person who is working more than a full-time job during the week, plus more than a full-time job on the weekend and is flying home to be able to be present for people who are experiencing the same levels of hurt that he has. Um, man, if everybody who calls themselves Christian 
would go to those lengths to make loving God and loving people um, top of the chain. So I'm sorry if that made you uncomfortable, but that's no, but that's no man. That's but that's the that's the golden that's the golden handcuffs, if you will. That once you know too much like that, man, you just I mean, you're the 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 word compassion is 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 so misused until you've until you've crawled literally i mean my motto was literally like before before terry died i mean i had it on a business card and email make it happen make it happen i'm gonna make it happen man and I'm, you were making it happen i was but it was it was it was it was not um real it was not godly it was very self it was i mean i never was boastful about it but i knew that i was you know <laughs> I knew I was doing things, um, and and um, and we could have a whole other conversation about why I believe some things happen and some things don't, um, in a way. And sometimes it's it's a false positive in what you're doing. I'll be brutally honest, and you think you're you're walking in in favor, and I think sometimes you're walking in manipulation. It's almost the Jezebel side of of moving things around in a way and creating an environment that that you know, allows you to maneuver in a, in a, in a way that, you know, makes you seem like you're on the path of, of the right path. Um, but man, back to that, that church and that, that, um, and you know, I never told anybody that was funny because I just thought it was my, that was, that was part of the blessing and God always made a path for me to get back, made me get there. I mean, it was never a problem. I mean, um, but I remember, um, and I think this is when it really hit me, is when when I started really realizing um, what Terry loved about getting to church early. Um, and it wasn't sitting in the pews talking because most often she was just sitting there in quiet um, nature. But, but the praise and worship, and I was not one. I mean, I was into some of these bands she listened to, <laughs> Casting Crown and some of these but and I'm still not big no no offense if anybody is um, big into contemporary Christian music but I'm still not there because it was a little bit radio jingleish to me but but man I I mean I I mean my kids and myself I mean we we are worship praise and worship and my wife I mean we just we just love it and I and I believe now um and music is not the root of all of it, but we are made to worship. I mean, literally. Um, and, and, and music is one way that we do that. So don't get that confused. Um, but gosh, man, I, 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 people listen to this, I tell you, when I don't want anybody to ever have to go through these things, Ben, but when I see people that are going through deep, deep pain and hurt, and trust me, I don't know why, but I mean, I became the catch-all for a lot of our friends. Um, a lot of them you know that were calling, going through divorces, going through whatever, going through yeah. all the things. But, again, uh, I mean, that escapism of, of getting out of the furnace and getting out of the fire, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I had all kinds of people around me. Remember 07, 08 was all the builders and everybody was collapsing and yeah. filing bankruptcy, and I went, I literally thought at the time I'd do anything to file emotional bankruptcy and get out of this the way I feel like they can do financially. But now I look at it and I go, absolutely not. I said, and almost I go, I wonder if they would have been better off if they, if the government didn't have a way for them to get out of financial, could they live through that? I know maybe that's not accurate, Mm -hmm. but, but I, but I look at those things and I go, that's where I went through. And it wasn't, at the time, I, I literally, and, and this is something else I think people need to hear, that we're, we're too focused on what can God can do for us rather than what he's doing in us. Yeah. Say that again. Say that again. So help. We're, we're so focused, and our prayer, some, our prayer life is do yeah, this yeah, for yeah. me, help me. I mean, it can be thankful, but there's an underlying. We have to be careful there because I caught myself so often that there's an underlying thing of of expectation for things which is not always bad in helping us navigate life in a way but it has to be through doing it 
yeah. a change in us. And then from That's there, good. Yeah. right, all, all, all the other things happen. But, but unfortunately, we're taught, um, you know, a different path. And, 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 man, this world will shake you up on those mm-hmm. things of, of what you can get rather than just going, what I will need to get is get healed because that was broke. And I had money coming in. I mean, my dad was taking checks and going, where is this check from? What is this check from? I don't know. I don't know. You yeah. have it. I don't care. I mean, I, I was disinterested in that, in things of this world mm-hmm. in a good way. So one so, question before we move know. on from the grief share part and just out of curiosity, it hit me while you were speaking, uh, talking, um, are there any of those individuals that you're still in relationship with all these years later? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I still see some of them. I run into them or I hear from them or I talk to them or they call me and, and we kind of laugh. It's almost like that hidden. I mean, you know, as a pastor, it's like, you don't, it's like that. Yeah. Remember that time? You don't even talk about it because they're, because why? I mean, I don't think that maybe they did. Maybe, maybe Shadrach, Meshach and the baby go every time they go together, go, maybe the fire (laughs) and they buck their knuckles. I don't know. I think, I think they just probably moved past it. Yeah. They just knew they winked at each other. Yeah. You know, wasn't that wild? Yeah. Uh, um, and so you had that secret society of when you walk those things out and you know, you yeah. see people in church that you go, man, I didn't think that that couple yeah. would make it and look at them. Um, you know, I didn't think this would happen. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I'm in t- a touch with them and I hear from them. I mean, grown men that go, Dave Sharp. Just wanted you to know I love you. Yeah. No sense in calling me or anything else. Um, and so I get that, that community thing. Um, man, it's it's just <laughs> when you go through those and things. The with stay people, in power, man, right? It's a, it's the, a bond. The stay in power there. So I have a friend, Gabe Barrett. I'm going to have him on. Gabe, man, oh, man. There's a, there's a short list of people that I have been so, so freaking excited to have on. Uh, you're at the top of that list, but Gabe is, he's coming quickly. So if y'all are listening to this, you better pack a lunch because we got them lined up. But Gabe yeah. has this saying, people aren't projects. People aren't projects. And, you know, the, the gist of it is, you know, serving people, not, not as a means to an end or as a metric or some way to validate or count or pad our, our egos, um, you know, people aren't projects. When Gabe says that, the gist is the assignment is love God and love people. And and when we're doing mm. that authentically and and that and and with our whole hearts, it's more than oh gosh, I gotta go lead this grief group. I'm kinda on the hook for this. It's that kookiness where we, it's the in us versus for us. It's that, it's that kookiness where it's like, and it, it weirds some people out, right? So it, some people it's too much, but it's like, I'm not here to, 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 you're not there to check a metric. Like I am with you. I am for you. And I'm going to be here until you tell me that you don't want me to be here anymore. And for men specifically, in my lived experience, unless there's crisis, men are not as open to to that type relationship. In and through crisis, when the will and the pride is broken down and, and, and folks do realize that control is a facade, it's a hoax, when we're obedient yeah. to step into that with no strings attached and just to just to try to do our best to love people, the stay in power, I guess what I'm saying is, so I'm a challenger. I'm always trying to think of how to challenge people. And I would, if you're listening to this, I would ask yourself, just inventory, how many 15-year, 10-year relationships do you have that were forged in fire where somebody showed up in your life or you showed up in somebody's life and it's still there that, that um, if, if things come unraveled tomorrow, you know, and you're knower that that person is there, or you know that they know that you're there. 
that should mm-hmm. could be should be maybe a metric of 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 this community yeah. oh, this yeah. idea of community i think and when we i don't want to like get off on a tangent and start preaching but when we get past this um cultural um the 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 the, the, it's a game when we get past all the games and we enter into this place where where we're real we don't have to be right we can just be real um and we begin to allow people in which is hard it's so freaking hard no boy that's when these relationships are forged and those relationships stand the test of time. I believe that they honor God and I believe that they give us a glimpse. You know, we pray, I pray all the time, thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And I think these relationships give us a glimpse of thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So that, um, yeah, I had not intended to get into that at all, but but it it's reassuring. It's it's a piece of confirmation to me that you're st- even if it is a wink in the Walmart, man. Even if you are walking by and you're just like, "What's up? What's up?" But you know, you know. Remember that so, time. So we've talked about <clears> tear, <throat> um, talked about the the hurt and the anguish several times. We have uh, talked about your wife. We've talked about your kiddos. Um, as we get ready to transition, I would love to hear like, so from, because God built us with shock, right? Autopilot. And so there's a season after tragedy, catastrophic loss, praise God that he built us so that we can kind of autopilot. So then, uh, let's kind of break it up from, from the time that wore off and, as you began to uh, process and work through, as God began to grow you and reinstate you, just from there, maybe up uh, to Natalie, let's kind of talk through that season. I'm unfamiliar with that season. So what you share would be a gift to me. Um, In there, we kind of lost touch. Um, I stepped away from rodeo. Uh, and was just consumed by ministry, vocational ministry. Um, you had a 19 ring circus going on all the time. So, um, so, so let's talk about that, that kind of that, those gap years. Um, well, first of all, I was fortunate enough to have, um, you know, it was funny because we adopted this child and I was, I was brutally kind of stupid and thinking that that was the one thing that was going to keep me alive if I could keep a child, but they don't let up, you know, we were just wow. about to go get the child, but they, you just don't, you don't get to keep a, a baby girl as a, as a male dad, nor, mm-hmm. nor it would have been a train wreck. Um, but, but he did give me, um, and I still hear from a lot of them, all the bull riders in the PRCA to mentors. So I started seeing that. I mean, I'd walk into these, um, call them production meetings behind the shoots with the guys to get them lined up, to tell them what we were going to do. And, uh, and I would, I, man, I would, um, I would literally just stand up there and just rip with prayer and Holy Spirit over them. And, and they were, they were, man, they were wild. I mean, these guys were wild and I would go places with them and do things, but my journey because and i think this is important it's it's not that you can't look everybody's story is different in how you get there but i can tell you and this this is not something that just people put in the bible or tell you from a counseling standpoint to seeking godly counsel wisdom but more importantly seeking his face because Ben, you can tell me a lot of things. People can do things. But when God tells you things, and, and there's a verse that, that he even will teach you things. And and when I started learning stuff like this, and 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 I was fully baptized. I mean, I remember being, I mean, like I had some really wild moments from 
from the demonic mm -hmm. to the heavenly to the angelic. I mean, I had some really wild spiritual collisions that that wrecked me in ways. Um, and I don't mean just like sure. I was crying and was sad, but in ways that that man transformed me and I started seeing healings and radical transformation and seeing things happen. And once that starts and you're seeking that to he, to he who has given much is required much, but it starts stacking on itself. And when you start to see those blocks stack up and you get excited, then it's like every time you get on a, a better bucking horse and you ride them. And the next thing you know, you broke 80 or if you're a golfer and all of a sudden you break a hundred and then you're shooting in the eighties, mm -hmm. whatever that is for you, you understand that building process because you're seeking it and doing it. And I have this conversation with guys. I'm on a couple of, uh, uh Bible meetings and podcasts and different things with a large group of, mm -hmm. of professional athletes and, and Ben, you know, I mean, how much time they'll put into a rig in to building it up to a glove, man, the analogies yeah. are just overwhelming. And, and for me though, here's what I learned. And, and, and th this, this will translate because you've stood there and pulling horns around and bucking shoots many times a bullfighter is that, that sitting, sitting there afraid of what's going to happen or that you're not enough or that you are not, you're not prepared spiritually or you're not good enough yet to, to nod your head. I mean, when I realized I had to just nod my head and let God ask him to open the gate and go. And, and that was the only way I was going to be a hundred yeah. points or 95 or whatever. And maybe, maybe I got run over, maybe I got, you know, beat up, but, but I was going to do it and seek God, but I had to nod my head because this complacency of sitting in the yeah. chute, jockeying, yeah. jockeying, this ain't right. This don't feel right. I mean, you can spend a lifetime doing that. And, and that is not right. on earth as it is in heaven. That is not. I mean, we, 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 we can't get ourselves into a place of being transformational because we're so stuck in transactional. And, and we're so busy trying to figure out the steps and how to move this and this will produce this rather than just nodding our head and going with going with God and, and going, yeah. but God, I mean, where else am I going? And then the transformation. And that's really what it is. But we all want our faith to be in some weird place of it's like it's transactional. So often you come, you do this, you tithe and, and, and I know faith is not work is, is dead without works is a verse. But for me, that, that, that confused me until I realized that, that the works were out of the overflow of the faith that was inside of me. And that wasn't something that I produced. It was something that, that I became. And so, so to answer your question in that walk, I mean, there was a lot of times and a lot of people and people I valued that said, man, you just got to get out and, and have some fun. I mean, man, you gotta, um, you gotta follow your heart, man. Heart, heart's a little bit, a little bit deceptive. I'll just be honest. So, so, I mean, we all know what that would look like because that's how, how we all got to, to that place. I mean, that's how the, the prodigal got there. I mean, that's how we, you know, most of the stories we know of, of problem and ruination have got there. So I literally went, how do I try to do this? And, um, and, and move through this process, Ben. And it was, it was, it was rough. I mean, I'll be honest, it was rough because I'm living on planet earth and, and how to be on earth and not be of earth and to be, as you mm -hmm. said, on earth as it is in heaven, because I, I had long been upset about the, you know, the, the, the raise your hand and, and, uh, yes. and cl yes, close your yes. eyes and say a prayer and, and get some, and, and 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 what's it called? It's a the sinner's prayer, and say this, and and get to get some fire insurance. And I'm going if all I'm, I mean, it's and just self preservation. Right life, it's the it highest is. form of selfishness. I know, and I'm, and 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 you know, and that that prayer had only been around yeah. for seventy years at that point, so it wasn't even 
it was so confusing to me, and I'm not discounting it because I believe that there are places there. But the community after that, and and the go and make disciples of all the world was was not after that. They put me on a list yeah. and said we saved another one, and I and I was as far from it. But I go, gosh, um, what does this really look like? And I know people people just you know go wild with relationship and. Um, but you know the verse of nothing can separate you sure. from the love of God, nor principalities, nor darkness. And but there's there's a thing in there, Ben, that talks about neither the present nor the present nor the future. What it doesn't mention is the past, and so I couldn't dwell in the past anymore. I started going, man, if I try to live in the past, it's like I'm I'm going to put I'm going to put. I'm going to put Jesus in, uh, I, first of all, I'm not going to believe him. I may believe in him, but I'm not believing mm-hmm. in what he spoke over me because I just want to put him back on the cross every day. And, and man, I had some hard, hard looks at myself and go, how am I going to be um, set apart and try to walk through this world? And it's, it's, I mean, it's still not easy. Go try to travel and fly and, and all the political stuff going on and all the, mass mandates and all the dry, all the stuff that comes flying yeah. at you in your life. Jeez, yeah. I just, I got to try to, I got to try to, you know, be in love in this. Um, but man, that, that, that period of time, because you're looking for breakthrough and you're looking for it. I mean, I remember leaving the house every day, every day going, I'm going to meet my wife today. I was so radically focused on that and so broken because I had a I had an opening in my life that was that was critically community community related because that was my internal community for what sure. for what that's worth community can be all the things but when you're used to it being here no different than you are and then everything else is outside and and part of that is is you're braver when you know you have God in your corner, but also when you have that woman or that man at home that's got your yeah. back no matter what. And when that's absent, there's something lost in the tangible that until you can reconcile that in a relationship with God and go, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I that, get it now. there's so much in there. People are going to have to, I will, people are going to have to listen and re-listen and re-listen. But one thing, so <laughs> one thing in there, and it was at the beginning of that section is that stood out to me is you started where you were. So a lot of guys and, and, and women too, but mostly guys that I deal with and, and trying to, as I watch the smoldering ember and we flame, if you fan it and you start to see the spark and smoke and then they catch fire and, so a lot of people who come alive in Christ, they think you've got to go make these gigantic like vocational changes. And what I'm leaning into is at the beginning of that section, what you said was you would find yourself at these events that you're producing. I mean, you're in charge of everything, but it's in the production meetings, which a lot of our people won't know what that is, but it's a required meeting the contestants and the contract personnel and everybody who's anybody is required to be in these meetings. It's nothing different than what you were doing before Terry died. It, the, the, the difference isn't your environment. The difference is your heart. The difference is what the Lord's doing in you. And so all I'm getting at there is if you're listening to this and you think when you come alive in Christ, you got to go make all these enormous, no, don't, don't use that as a crutch either. I mean, there, there can and will be changes, but if fear is holding you back from, from, from being open and honest and real and coming alive in Christ, fear that you're going to have to make some lifestyle changes, fear that you're going to have to make some gigantic shifts. God is not a God of fear. Um, and and so, no. you know, for you to share that, you took what was happening in you and implemented what you felt like God was leading you into in the context you found yourself um that's a good word 
a really good word. Um, and so, mm. so, mm-hmm. so you were doing that like in the rodeo part, um, like personally in those gap years, what was happening, um, with you in you, where were you living? Um, what were you doing? Um, you know, what were you doing with yourself? Well, you know, I, gosh, I was still working. I was doing the food business thing. Uh, wildly um, crazy brands and new brands and launching things and companies were selling and and then the rodeo piece. But, you know, I started I started going, man, I got to have um, some companionship in this thing, as I mentioned. And so, but, you know, I realized really quick that, and, and this is important, I, I'm, nobody's going to just tell you, and even if they do, you're not going to believe it. But, but, but man, this Dayton thing, and, and you never had to do it, Ben, but when you're in your 30s and 40s, and, and I mean, even as kids, it is literally not, I mean, I don't even know where the Dayton word came from. That is so backwards to me as I look back on it, because I literally go, um, man, the minute I knew God would tell me yes, um, when I met Natalie and he told me no millions of times and I'd go on five, six, seven dates. And every time I'd go, this is an absolute no. And then I'd finally look at him and go, Hey, this is only going to get worse. Um, and there was some hard, I mean, this is only going to get worse because I'm not in it. And they weren't, you know, always either they were there with me and yeah. agreed, but everybody's like, you know, what else do I got to do? Yeah. Let's go eat sushi, you know, and you're going, how do, how do I get here? Um, and you, you know, and you start toying with people's yeah. um, emotions in a way that, that are hard to unwind. And you just go, if you don't know that, you know, then I, I don't know. So I, so I did a lot of that stuff and, but Natalie was the first girl that I asked out. I mean, I remember being scared because um, because I, I went, oh, my gosh, God is telling me. And that means I've got to let go of a lot of self. Because over those seven years at this point, I've created a lot of me on accident just because I didn't answer to nobody. I didn't. I mean, I remember getting married and one night her tech calling me going, where are you at? And I go, oh, I'm at TJ Maxx. <laughs> and she goes, well, you don't tell anybody, you just leave. And I go, well, yeah. I guess I've been doing this for yeah. eight years. You just go where you go. So I had to re- reprogram from being, you know, so, so, so that out. lead me through um, how you and lead me through. Mm-hmm. I know a, a large part of it, but lead us kind of into how you and Natalie became you and Natalie. Again, it's, I mean, it's back yeah. to community. You get somebody in need and I, and, and God could always pull me somewhere. It was somebody in need for something that um, sure. was, was needed even for me. I mean, let's be honest. Grief share wasn't, wasn't for everybody else. I thought I was helping everybody else. Well, who was getting yeah. helped? Um, me. <laughs> um, I didn't see that at the time. I thought I was fixing things. Um, but yeah, we, we met through, um, uh, friends of ours, David Phipps and his family, and and they had their their niece that was getting married. Wanted me to play music. I was in Omaha at a rodeo there, and I said, "Well, I'll, I'll fly home and um, get a couple speakers and come play music." And I did, and we met. And then I was like, "Oh man, this is this is this is bad. I'm I'm about to be done." And I tried to get out of it. I mean, I broke her heart. I was so scared. Hey, and look, in all fairness, I mean, again, my fear was that I would, and, and, and it still creeps in sometimes, that I would lose another wow. person, and I wasn't built to do this twice. I'm, I'm like, I can never get wow. back in a relationship. I, I crawled out of this ditch. Even, yeah, man, and I, and I told her, I said, I'm just not capable. I'm, 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 I'm going to be bad for you. And I, and, I, and I was in some aspects. I mean, there were things that I was still holding on to or, or just, just, you know, I mean, your heart is fragile. And then I started reading about, you know, yeah. guard your heart and all the wellspring life flows out of there. And I'm like, man, I, I can't have my heart get stomped like this again. But, you know, God, um, man, he lit a fire under me after we broke up and said, get back up there. And you tell her um, you're sorry and, and you guys are going to get married. And I, I drove up here and I called her and, 
and I was called her mom. I said, where is she at? I got to talk to her. And, and, and I just met her here in Dalton and was like, here's the deal. I mean, I don't know if you hear from God, but boy, I do. And, and it's, it's like legit. And I can't, did I it can't freak her anymore. out? Did that Man, freak was, her out? Like what was her? It, how, it how just did that? I, no, I think that, yeah, it probably did. I and mean, she's probably a little bit going, yeah, right. I don't know. He just got home and got lonely. But no, man, I was I was in the belly of the well and been spit out. And and and, and Natalie and Nineveh start with an N. So I was I was on my way. <laughs> Never thought of it that way, but here I was. Uh, so yeah, man, it was it was like, and then I mean, it was like no time. I'm going, yeah, I'm not looking. I know that I know, and I'm not doing this dating thing, and mm-hmm. and come what may. And she trusted you in that. I mean, she. My name's Bennett, and I'm all yeah. in. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. because I was because God told me. <laughs> I mean, I said, "Don't argue. <laughs> you talk to him." <laughs> but yeah. at that point, you know, take it up with God. I mean, I'm. If I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna be the man of the house, it's yeah. gonna start with God telling me when to marry. And, you know, jokingly, I'd leak. I mean, and I think that's the way it ought to be. I think that men ought to be pursuing women in a way of confidence and boldness that I know that I know mm-hmm. that I know what we're doing here, and here's why. And I and I'm willing to, you know, to move away from all my things and whatever that mm-hmm. looks like to do whatever to in obedience. Work. And here we go. Um, I didn't. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what was crazier than that, Ben, is most people don't know, is I was, I mean, I remember audibly, and this is another good one for people that smoke or chew. I remember I I could smoke, uh, you know, three packs a day all of a sudden after Terry died. I mean, I was nervous smoking. I would, I would drink coffee um, all morning, all afternoon, read the Bible. I'd take a break and eat one meal. Um, my dad would come down. I drink two or three beers, read the Bible again. But one, when it broke for me was when God said, I, was, "I think at this point I was down, down to get a load of this. I was down to two packs of cigarettes and one can of Copenhagen a day." And God said, "My future for you with that it doesn't include that." And I went, "What's that mean?" And and for those of you that have read or heard about, I don't even remember yeah. all the fasts. I learned about all these other fasts after I did one. Um, there was all these like, I'm not, not yeah, fasting, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was like a Daniel fast. There was all these special fasts. I didn't know about those. I, and God told me to fast. So I, I had read about that in the Bible. And I go, nobody does that. I mean, that was like a trillion years ago. Nobody fast anymore. So I read about it and I go, maybe I will. So I stayed at my house down in the middle of nowhere, Maryland, Maryland County. And I like, uh, you know, the only thing I remember, maybe I, I can't remember exactly. So I'm trying to be honest. If I had it like, one cup of coffee Friday morning, maybe, and then I went. I don't even think I'm going to have liquid, and so I so I went Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And by the end of that, I've never wanted tobacco again. My body, and my spirit, and my soul were so desiring the heart of God and and nutrients, water, food, living water, and real water that, that there was no. I mean, fasting and praying for three days yeah. without food and water, your body just goes. And, 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 and God literally, I mean, you just took it away in that way, but it was out of that obedience of going because Natalie never goes on date one. If I walk in with my, my two packs of cigarettes and my leather Copenhagen, I'm kidding. Yeah. I, didn't have, I didn't have one of those, but you, you, you've seen them and I'm not knocking it, but I just like, I mean, that just was not in my future and I don't get date one, much yeah. less two. If I'm going, yeah. what are you doing this weekend? You know, it wasn't in her DNA. I mean, she still yeah. struggles. She goes, I had forgotten that about you. you smoke. I knew that about you because um, I used to think that guy's cool. Like I'd see, you yeah. know, always on the exterior, just like cool, <laughs> you know, yeah. the whole thing, and, you know. Um, yeah. Like, like a duck. Like a duck yeah. I, but I remember that. I had forgotten that. I can't imagine you smoking either. But in that, God was prepping you. He's preparing you for this future, for the future glory. Um. yeah don't deny the don't deny those urgings again like you praying for me man something as simple i mean i mean proverbs 16 9 i mean you go god gives you the desires of your heart but he determines your steps and when he determines your steps and gives yeah. them to you it's like 
you're walking through that. I mean, it's 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 an interesting dynamic. Um, but I do believe. I mean, God's providence gets you to places, but man, we will we will jack it up given yeah. an opportunity and delay so, some of these things. So, um, so you all met. You started dating. How quickly between when you turned around and drove back to Dalton from that moment to wedding? How how long of a time would Wow. wow. Not, but not even a year. Not even a year. Yeah. And then, and then Natalie, um, even through her, without going through all the details, she, she basically had like one, one millionth yeah. of a chance of, of having a child. It was just off the table. So, um, but then I went to her Christmas and at her Christmas, her family's Christmas, you know, there's 50 people there and, 15 of Praise them God. adopted or foster kids running around everywhere from every color, of the rainbow, every color, of the rainbow from every region of the world. Yeah. Um, you name it. And, and I, and, and I go, man, I can, I could get down with this. These kids are all over. And, you know, with my schedule, there was no way to get really certified in that. And then all of a sudden I was home one weekend, no nothing. And Natalie goes, get a load of this. They got a three day crack three day. I love these three day things. Um, they got a three day um, get approved to foster class. We talk about Friday, Nineveh. Saturday, Sunday, and you talk we about the well. And we're <laughs> and and we're, yeah, and we're, and, I mean, here we are. Yeah. So, so that's how it kind of started. And we started fostering, which is wonderful. But, you know, my wife's heart, I mean, gosh, you, you, you know, nothing will make you more judgmental than foster yeah, kids yeah, yeah. become the best thing for this child. And and when you when you take them back, it's 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 hard. How many and, children and did you foster? Lost through that, but that yeah. ultimately is just a couple. Just a couple before God said, "Well, here um, the the couple that actually married us um, was Natalie's friends from childhood, and and they were in Dominican." Um, in the mission field, and they had just adopted their third child. And, I mean, they had one that was blonde hair to one that was um, African-American dark and one that was in the middle, which, yeah, and 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 they literally called us and said, hey, um, and keep oh, in yeah. mind, I'm, I'm, I'm a yeah. Missouri. I mean, my family is all Missouri. And then they call me and go, hey, this there's this woman that we got one of our kids from that's in Missouri. She's pregnant again, and, and we want you to, we can't um, take on a fourth. We want you guys to go and, and look into this. And, I mean, I went back into my tailspin of I am not equipped. Now I'm not only going to ruin Natalie's life, I potentially could ruin a child's life. I'm just, I'm still... I'm still not there. Um, and then I remember going to Bonifay to help Wanda and Charlie and, and the Bonifay committee run their production and run their rodeo. And I'm down there praying and Natalie's calling me going, all right, what do we decide? Are we going? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I don't know. And boy, God just hit me with it down there. And I called her maybe like halfway through the rodeo. And was Amen, like, man. we got to get this baby. We got to do whatever it takes with this baby. And then we that's so there. that's when I came back <laughs> into that's the we, next kind of on my timeline. I was in the yeah because I remember group sending the email. Like, yeah. This is where we are. We have this beautiful baby. This is the bureaucracy. Yep. We need God to move. Like we need God to move. And so I'm sending this to people that I know who yep. will war in prayer. So that's kind of where I picked back up into the thing and started Amen. to fill in and catch up. Um, so that's, that's Marley. Tell us about Marley. Oh man, what a joy. She, um, so the quick version of Marley, um, is, man, we, uh, we, 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 we agree to go over and meet the mother and the grandmother and we do that. And, um, we get home and then they call us the next day and said, absolutely. We want you guys to take Marley when she's born. Okay. Well, this is, you know, this is five and a half months in, we've got time. We're going to figure out what we're doing, blah, blah, blah. And, um, like two, maybe three son, uh, maybe, maybe a month later we go, Hey, let's go get a, um, car seat. And I go, yeah, let's go get a car seat. Yeah. So we go and get a stroller and a car seat to kind of pops in the system and then pops in the 
pop out stroller, the whole thing, and we've got it in the back of the car. We come home, and like every single couple after church, we're asleep on the sofa, and the phone rings and says, Hey, the baby's coming. We're like, <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? What well, baby? <laughs> <laughs> the one y'all agreed to take, we're like, oh no, all we have is a stroller. It's still in the car, in the box. And so we grab some stuff and we take off 10 hours and we get there. And uh, you know how that goes, man. You walk in and there's this baby and you're just like, oh my gosh. And I start, I mean, and and let me, let me tell you, I, I'm going to share this with you because this is worth hearing. And I don't know that I've ever told you this. I think I've told two people, but... Um, one of the things, ironically, um, one of the times when we lost a child with Terry was, and this is, this is wild. Um, cause God always spoke to me in numbers for years and it's changed a little bit, but numbers was like our, our love language, if you will. Um, but nine 11 was a big one for, for us, but also for us, because the following year we lost a child, but, um, here, here's the thing that's wild is I'm driving, get in the car, we're taking off and I go, and I'm not talking. And now it's like, you okay? And I go, yeah, I'm great. I'm just like, God, am I doing the right thing? Can, can I do, I mean, I'm seeking and searching audible voice. I'm turn I'm turning, yeah. I'm turning all your past upside down. And I go, holy cow. What does that mean? Give me chills. And I drove and and it's only 30 miles Chattanooga. Before I got to Chattanooga, I looked over at Natalie and I went, oh my gosh. And she goes, what? And I said, what is the date today? And she goes, it's November 6th. And immediately God goes, I mean, without even thinking, I can't make this up, goes, wow. Turn 9-11 upside down. And it's 11-6. And she's born on 11, six. So we get her, we get up there, we go through all this stuff. And of course, Missouri says, here she is, Marley Ray Sharp. I started Googling names. I found the, the name Marley Ray and, and it meant Meadow of Grace. And I'm just all excited about this. And, and then they, they say, yeah, that, that's a problem. You can't bring an undocumented child back to Georgia. <laughs> so Georgia, now my home state where I can, where I can literally foster and adopt and yeah. do whatever is now saying not so much. And that's where everybody got involved in the next thing I know, just a radical move um, of God's hand on all this. I mean, just every obstacle. Uh, I'm serious. When you, when you are literally in those situations, it's just so fun because you don't, you're not operating from the accord of man, even though there's a lot of community and men and people praying. And, and those early days, Ben, people, I mean, I don't, I don't tell this enough because people look at me like I'm crazy, but I could literally, literally feel prayers. And I know, and it might, it was like I was, I don't know, man, it was like I'd been burned and all my, all my, nerve endings were exposed. Mm -hmm. I could sense everything that was going on in the spirit realm around me. Um, but, but when people started praying for that baby and that, that transition, it, it moved mountains. And the next thing I know, we've got a group that's in Chattanooga that's going to come down and do the whole home study, the whole process mm -hmm. in a week, which is not yeah. is unheard of. And done. Three days. I mean, yeah. Done, and then the yeah, and then the lady in Atlanta just had to drop drop the gavel and move on, and then we we got in front of my computer just like this with the guy back in Missouri, and yeah. he made it all officially Gosh, that's good. third so degree final. So, how old is Marley now? Yeah, what's your what's your if you Marley could only choose six. one, what's your most favorite thing about her? Man, it's just. <laughs> Just her genuine, just her genuine tenderness, Sweet. just, just total tenderness. I mean, she, she just loves, yes, gosh, she loves big. I mean, she's big emotions and I love it. Whether it's hurt or yeah. crying or man, she's just is so tender. And, and so then, big so tell, tell me about yeah, McCabe I mean, then and, and, she's and a, Lord. So here's a great story. So McCade, if. If you're with a 
uh, almost five, a five pound baby for a month in Missouri and you fed it and changed it and you're trying to figure out what to do. Well, Apparently you make another <laughs> while you're there. <laughs> Apparently you go, well, we've watched all the TV, we've changed the diapers. and So next thing I know, yeah, we get home and we're doing things and Natalie goes, hey, guess what? And I go, you're pregnant. She goes, what? Yeah, I mean, literally that yeah. fast. And this is a woman that can't, cannot, by medical reasons, even her gynecologist was like, what? Cannot be pregnant by, yeah. by, and you know, everybody's like, man, we've been praying for this and that. And you're just going, this is so wild. And, and fast forward on McCade is that he's due in September. And I'm thinking if he comes on September 11th, this is just going to be wild. And, and, and I almost was willing to tell everybody, I did, I kept that to myself, but I'm going like, God's going to do this again. But just when you think, I mean, you're like Job and his buddies, you got God's plan figured out and why things happen. Natalie's water breaks and then she, we take off the hospital and, and all of a sudden we realize at 12.01 when midnight rolls, it's not about Which is nine twelve. It's coming on her birthday. Okay. No, okay. no, no, but okay. this is, no, this is a month or, or three weeks early now. So, so not only ch child comes early, yeah, um, but comes on her birthday. So it's all about her and, wow. and, and it's like, God just goes here. And now I'm giving you a to, child to, to Natalie as a I present mean, yeah. to let yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> to Natalie. Yeah. Cause I'm thinking, you know, he's going to tell me something her. else and give me more affirmation. No, it was not stupid me. I was. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. I was going to get a, so a third how far affirmation part of the that I made the right move, but yeah. Wow. Nine months in a week. Yeah, so we both had a yeah. child for a while, except for when I was gone, and God bless her. I mean, um, it's, it's I mean, twins and kids and triplets, I, I just don't know mm -hmm. how people do it, but ours were, you know, in natural progression where, you know, nothing was together. It was close, but... <laughs> and we'd hear him crying and go, which one is that? Oh, that's yours. And then I would get up and then, you know, you do all the, you do all the things and put them back down. And then the next one would cry and go, that's yours. And so we'd pass each other in the hallway for a while there. And, and victory was, you know, needless to say, yeah. was the day one of them could hold a yeah. bottle or feed themselves. So um, every number one favorite there. thing about McCain. So, man, he is... <laughs> That guy is excited about everything. I mean, he is, he loves to dance. He, he is just sports. Yeah. I mean, he is all in on yeah. doing things. I mean, does he ever have a bad just day? Just a lot. He, he just is great. He does have he bad absolute. days. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 He's, um, and he, and he's, he's a little, um, we joke because he is just like his mom. I mean, not only is he built like her, but he's, um, yeah, man, he, he gets, when he gets upset, he, 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 he goes off and then we're like, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. And Natalie goes, well, he gets by, he gets it naturally. So, um, yeah, but he's awesome. Yeah. He is funny. His first year at school, um, you know, I, I think I went to the principal's office like once Natalie never, I mean, she didn't even talk. And McCage spends like, a tenth of his first year of going to the principal's office all the time because everything, you know, yeah. it's got to be funny and, and do all the Is things. Is there a buffalo coat and, in the mix for him? It's just wild, but it's good. He does. I don't know, man. Everybody tells me he needs his own buffalo coat. So I, mean, I don't know. I'm Where did the buffalo it. coat um, come from? Yeah. This is an aside. We, we, Cheyenne, Cheyenne Frontier Days. I'm up there, and and as any good man would do, and I have buyer's remorse. I mean, I I've, I've had a push mower for years because I bought a riding mower, and I just couldn't stand that I paid that much money for something I could push and walk. Um, but I was in Cheyenne, yeah. and I walked by this thing every morning because we'd get there early to set up because we were streaming the Cheyenne Frontier Days, and um, and I'd walk past the the village where they had all the vendors and stuff, and. This guy had clothes, period um, clothes, okay. like all this Western for movie sets and stuff that he made. And Buffalo Coats was one of the things he made for some of these Western movies in Hollywood. <laughs> and uh, he had one hanging in the back of his shop. 
And I, and about the third day I walked by, I said, what's that, what's that thing? Like, I got to know, like, what's, what's that thing, uh, go for? And he tells me and I'm going, Ooh, and I said, what size is that thing? He said, I, don't, I think it's like a, it's kind of like a 41. It'd probably be about your size. So I tried it on, man. It's like, man, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I felt like <laughs> Joseph. All, all my brothers were jealous, man. I don't I had, know if I'm, I, I don't know the, if I'm jealous the of the coat, coat but I'm definitely de- <laughs> jealous of the moves. Dude, you can dance. You can freaking dance. And as a person who <laughs> can't, I'm like, go yeah. ahead. I'm, I am, yeah, I'm, so. I'm all about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So I called my wife and, and after the third day, he said, Hey, if I still have it, I'll cut you on, on championship Sunday. I'll cut you a deal if I still have it. So I went back by and he still yeah, had yeah, it. Yeah. He cut me a deal and which was not even cheap. I mean, we're talking, we're talking a couple thousand dollars for a Buffalo coat. And so I, uh, had it in the car and I was headed to Denver airport and I go, babe, I got the craziest question. I know I don't know how you'll feel about this, and told her what I told her what I was thinking about buying, <laughs> and she said, well, "If you think it sounds uh, kind of weird, but if you think you need it, <laughs> go ahead." And I went, it's good because it's yeah. in the passenger seat. I didn't tell her that it's in the passenger seat, but it's one of those things you go, yeah. man. Somebody yeah, someday yeah. will go, man. That was and so um, and kind of wrapping up. So now um, you are like what are you doing for Wrangler? Are you? I'm working with all the, like, like the people we endorse, the doing a little everything um, wow. from a sponsorship I see you at the NFR, events, like, uh, athletes, athlete, like performance um, winners, who ever won the rounds and all yeah. of that stuff. And then I'm able to keep up <laughs> with you on the social media, where you are and what you're doing. And I knew that, you know, there was a time that there was a chance for you to be in an extremely influential place in the PRCA. And then, and then when that door didn't open, the Lord opened this in Wrangler. And it's almost as if like God's will is for you to continue to be an influence for him in the Western sports industry. And when man shuts a door, God opens the door, um, to continue, um, that his will be done. And so from, again, from afar, just kind of, because in parts and pieces of that, you had reached out and we were praying. I was fasting yeah. and praying over different things. And um, so um, mm-hmm. are you happy mm-hmm. like in that role and, and, and the relationships and the connections and being able to be an agent for, yeah for an ambassador for Christ and that, Yeah, it's um, it's challenging um, to say the least. I mean, the environment, as you know, I mean, is not necessarily conducive, but um, to to like going, hey, let's do this, let's do that. But boy, I tell you, you would be amazed um, um, the 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 move sure. of God that is going on. And I'm not talking about praying in the arena or behind the bucket shoots and people that. Are, are doing things that are seeking and, and getting on um, Zoom and doing these things. 20, 30, you know, professional athletes at one time. I, I mean, I do some of these every week and I'm just like blown away. Um, but yeah, man, it's, look, I think for for me, um, and, and sometimes we get confused with our purpose and our calling and, and, and my purpose, once I knew what that was, and and even my calling, because it's so it's so all over the board, in things that I'm doing. But a lot of times, like this job, it's a lot of things that I've never done, don't know how to do. And again, that's why I know that I'm in the calling of what God is expanding my territory, giving me other things that I may use here for a year or five years. I have no idea, mm-hmm. but I can guarantee you it'll be building on something else because, okay. because of what my identity and what my purpose is. And, and, and when you understand those things and you're walking them out, I mean, again, like Joseph, doesn't matter where you're at, whether you're, you know, <laughs> in the jail or, or running from Potiphar. I mean, here you are. Um, so uh, I don't, I, I don't, 
I don't love every aspect of what mm -hmm. I do because it is so different from the way I'm wired, but that's how I also know that I'm doing what, because yeah. I mean, God, God could ask me to do all the easy things that I, I know how to do. And, and, but come on, Ben, I mean, like you getting into youth ministry and now running a church. I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. I don't need to tell everybody that just doesn't, I mean, your whole life and walk of life, it just, it's just not how it works. I mean, that's how, that's when you know, and that's when I go, gosh, so I do, man, I get up and I go, this is, this is wild. But then you get on the phone with somebody and they start sharing and talking and, um, man, I could sit and just name people that would make you go, wow. Um, and, and challenges and problems and praying with people. I think the funniest thing that I experienced in prayer and y'all hear this because Ben started this with this, um, is, is people that say, man, just be in prayer for our, our family or for me. I'm trying to do this, that, and the other. And, and I'll never forget, there was a couple people that early on, because I'm just kooky, uh, I'd go, well, that's cool, man. Give me your hands. Um, and, and then I just start praying, and I get done. <laughs> I go, what was that? And I go, what do you mean, what was that? And they go, I've never had him. I thought you just prayed for people. And, and I go, well, we did. And I mean, like, if you said, could, could would yeah. you would you grab me a bottle of water? Yeah. Would I say sure when I get home, and then I'll drink it for you? Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, man. I mean, just start doing those things, man. Just, just grab people and, like you said, throw a hand on them and 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 just yeah. let the utterance of the Holy Spirit's words just flow out of you. Um, gosh, yeah. And when you start getting people like that, and then man, that starts to spread. Um, the tentacles in prayer are wild once people, I mean, because I believe you in part mm -hmm. uh, a bit of a prayer mantle in people when you do that to them, when you, when you lay hands and they feel that and it brings them to a place of like, of, of, because prayer really feels like a lot of love. And they, that, I mean, that's, that's really what they're feeling um, regardless of the outcome, because they don't know what the mm -hmm. outcome is at the moment, but they know somebody cares enough to be kooky and lay yeah. hands on them and, yeah. and go at Awesome. It. I mean, yeah, I'll let you go. Thank you. Um, I love you, and I miss you. And, okay, uh, man. So before you go, you. Um, yeah, you imitation too, is the highest form of flattery or compliment. One of my favorite podcasts is Annie F. Downs. That sounds fun. And at the end of an episode, she asks each guest what sounds fun to you. And so as a spinoff, last week was week one with Connor, and I asked him, so I'll ask you, uh, how do you keep it simple? How do you simplify? What does that look like for you? Man, I, I, it's funny um, you ask that because when I first found your, your Simplify brand, I was literally, uh, when you wear that, on, as a shirt, it becomes, it becomes a question for everybody that sees you is what, what does that mean? Simplify. And so literally, um, for me, it became, it became my entire surrounding with my family to literally simplify what I was doing in the process. And I'm still, I'm still working through the ebb and flow, but man, I'm seeing just radical changes in me and my children and my wife and the way we're walking through things. And don't get me wrong. I'm still, yeah. I'm still, I can still be apostle Paul and run a red light trying to get to somebody. Um, but, but the simplification of that Ben is, is like literally human hey, being, not human doing all the time. Yeah. Um, and I, and I lived a lot of human doing. Um, and so when I can just, just sit in his presence and watch my children. And I know you've done it. And, and even with my wife, I can just look over at her in the bed and, and my children. And I go to their room every night between 12 and one every night, like clockwork and just sit and look at Amen. them and just go, man, simplify me, Lord. Make me sit in your presence and realize the goodness of God because, because, not because I've heard of you, but because we've walked. Yeah. Deal, thank you. Have a good night. Hug Natalie, hug them babies. 
hope to see you soon. Love you, man.